Uh, might want to turn down your volume. Oh, yeah. There's a lag. No, I know. We've been through it. <laughs> no, I told everybody you know one of us, like, cooking at the same time, or just you want us only to observe? You want us to ask questions? Well, if we get to a point where, I, where I've glossed over something, yeah, yeah. absolutely ask okay. questions. Okay. I'm going to try to make sure everything is set up. Yeah. It's like your see. option of things if you just, when you want if you're just gonna like fly by the seat of your pants to pick your herbs for your alternatives. There's your selection. Well, and show people like man, it, you probably oh, already have this seasoning. Flower. That's a lotus. That's blue lotus. No, I'm not. Gonna I'd like to, but no, I'm not going to. I'm thinking about grinding. You got it two up people. Yeah. Why not? I mean, I guess we could. I think it's just so appealing, you know, using flowers and that. Please be patient. I just want to make sure we have everything. We are going to, we are working today on how to make a salve. So I'm trying to make sure that we can get on here. Everybody can. All right, so I'm going to give you this, Kelly. Uh -huh. I have two students with me today. We had two two people. Um, we had two people show up for the workshop today, and we are going to go through. The one thing I didn't set up was my computer, so be patient. You can just fast forward through all this. There it is. So, any questions or anything that come in, you should be able to read those. And you'll probably have a good idea of who's on. <clears throat> we do have a moderator named Sarah. I don't, I'm not sure if she's going to be here today or not. Okay. Oh, boy, we got, we got some comments already coming in. How many people we have? We have four people. Right. Just says, hey, I'm here for this. I want to welcome everybody who's showing up live. All right, so we're, we're going to talk about... Why? Is it, well, first, we're going to go through. You guys know what a salve is. You know what you know what a salve. Do you know what a salve yes. is? Yeah. You know what a salve mm -hmm. is. For most people who don't know what a salve is, a salve is, is typically it's a it's a compound that's put together with um, herbs that that are infused with oils and mixed with typically beeswax or paraffin to create a, a hardenable um, medicinal use medicinal what would you call a compound that you can put on wounds to help heal wounds faster. They are fairly easy to make. Um, the, the professional ones that you get, if you go to a store, you're paying like 10 bucks an ounce for how to make it. You, know, you buy one, um, all natural. You can make them yourself. They're fairly easy to make. Now, I have kits that, that I made um, specifically for this class, and that's kind of what this class is for, but you don't have to have the kit to be able to make your own salve. You can just buy the beeswax or, or whatever. If you stick through a little bit later, we're going to talk about an alternative way to make your salve without having to use beeswax. And, and we've got a couple of ingredients that'll help with that, because some people are allergic to, to bee products and they can't they can't just have those. It'll, it'll cause more problems than it's worth. So um, we have alternatives for that. You can make your own salve without it being, that'll be an issue. Now what I went ahead and did, that, that, that hissy noise you hear, is I have, a, I have an induction heater that I've got specifically for this, this class. And I went ahead and started the oil ahead of time. What you want to do is you want to take your oil, if you can see, there, now you can see. Take your oil, and you get it, you don't want to get it really hot when you're doing your herbs. Um, if you get it really hot, the problem with it is you'll end up frying your herbs and you'll lose all your compounds. They have, each of these herbs that, we, that, that you pick, they have what's called volatile and essential oils. All the herbs are inherently... Uh, all the all the herbs inherently have this, and, and they even have it, and they'll retain them after they dry. So, like the blue lotus flower that Kelly has, has has still a lot of the the volatile and the essential oils that go with that. Um, as long as you don't break them up, when you go and you buy your powders, you, you're going to notice that you're going to lose a lot of your a lot of your compounds ahead of time. If you notice, if you get peppermint powder and you get peppermint cut and sifted versus peppermint whole leaf, they all smell completely different. Yeah. And, and, then, and if you grind up your peppermint leaf, it's going to smell different than the cut and sifted that you have. So, because it starts to release those compounds once you break up the, the surface area, the surface tension. Now, 
we were able to do this workshop. This is the Bear Soul Studio and Rock Shop in Cleveland, Ohio. And they put this, they put this, this neat little studio together where we were able to do this. And we're going to go ahead later, they, they, they've said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue probably doing some workshops here um, so we can keep, maybe do a series, make other things. Lotions are really cool to have at this time of year. Yeah, tinctures. At this, at this point in time, I, I was actually thinking maybe one of the next ones we could do like a, how to make a dandelion lotion. Right now, the sun's coming out, right? So dandelion's really super, it's so abundant, super right? and it, it's very abundant, so they're, they're very protective against uh, radiation. So you could actually make your own lotion it, with the same ingredient, similar ingredients to what we have here, and, and make a class out of that. And it doesn't take much, too much. It doesn't take too much effort to put it together. They they can be messy if you don't do them right, so they, you know that can be a problem. Timing is relevant when you're making lotions. So what I've done with this particular kit, I picked. Can I see your herb pack that came with your kit? Do you have any comments? Um, just like kind of saying hello, oh, hello. they're excited. Oh, we got nine people. All right. Yeah. So with the herb kit that I picked, I picked a healing, a healing blend. When when you go to pick your blend, make sure you're picking your herbs with purpose. You got to have a reason why you're picking it. You just don't want to go grab grab a bunch of random herbs and throw them together and hope for the best. Because if you're looking for something in particular, so say for instance, I want something for arthritis. I'm not going to go get something that, that does specifically just healing, right? I mean, that could be part of the problem, but for the most part, if I have arthritis, it's because I have inflammation. So I, I want to pick herbs that are going to be beneficial for inflammation. So you'd stick with something like mullein. Mullein is really good for inflammation. Comfrey, bone set, any of those are good for removing pain and inflammation. Um, so when, when you go to pick your herbs, you can even buy them online. You just got to make sure you're sourcing them pretty pretty accurately and, and, and it's easy to do that a good place to go to get herbs like that would be Etsy uh, Etsy has has a lot of people that are just you know some of them are homesteaders most of them are people just like us really? and and they're gonna go and they're gonna do the research and they're gonna you know and you, and you can read the reviews you know you're gonna know if, if they're giving junk because they're gonna have a lot of poor reviews and if they have a lot of poor reviews just don't buy it it, it really is that simple um, what, we're, what we have with the kit I put the kit together is you have enough to make two full salves. Let's do this bottle of oil. All right. The kit looks like this. You have two bottles of oil, two packages of beeswax, one package of pre-mixed herbs. You have two two ounce tins, six one ounce tins, labels for all the tins, straining cloths and instructions. So it, it it's enough for you to have, you should get about nine and a half, nine and a half ounces of salve, and they're all done. Which, if you're buying it on the market, it's like ninety dollars worth of salve. Um, on top of that, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna learn the skill of how to make it yourself. So you're gonna have the skill forever. <laughs> I mean, unless you forget it, um, you're gonna have to do this forever. And and I'm gonna go through and tell you know you don't have to have this this kit. I, I just pre pre arranged everything or pre measured everything to make it simple. Um, the base oil we have four ounces of oil, and we're mixing that with a half half ounce of beeswax and that that's pretty much the ratio you want to have if you're going to use one cup of oil so eight ounces when i make sa when i make salves typically for the old workshop um i make a lot of salve you know i'm doing it two three four cups at a time in some cases i'll fill up the giant crock pots to make black salve um maybe we'll go, that's what we'll do today we're going to talk about how to make a black salve okay. that was one of my salves okay so my black salve i know i'm a little bit off topic here but but just a real quick aside Black salve has been my continuing, evolving recipe that I've had for, I don't know, the better part of 20 years, 15, 20 years, right? And when I first started it, it is not at all what it is today. When I first started it, it had actual pine pine tar in it, um, among some other things. It was really, it smelled gross, it was very sticky, which is what you kind of want for a black salve, uh, a dry salve like that. But um, I, I couldn't get past the whole smell thing, okay? it smelled awful. So over the years, I have altered my recipe and, and I've changed it quite a bit. So now it has completely different, a completely different take. Where it doesn't have that smell. You have no aroma with it, but it'll still do all the drawing stuff that you want when you get a, a black salve. Um, yeah, I'm not allowed to sell that anywhere though. Etsy, you're allowed to sell it on Etsy. But eBay has banned black salve. Oh, all right. I didn't realize. Uh, I, that's a whole. That's a that's a story for a whole other video. Because that that was if you remember right, about 15 years ago, black salve was the miracle thing. Everybody was eating it and all that other stuff, right? Well, you can't eat black salve 
I even had a customer that was arguing with me about it was labeled for external use only, mm -hmm. right? So the, we had we have a black sab. It was labeled for external use only, and he argued. He's like, I, I'm going to eat this. I said, No, you can't eat it. It has it has herbs in there that are very harmful. You can't do that. Oh no, no, I'm telling you, I can eat it. It cures cancer. I'm like, No, oh. no, that's not what that yeah, is. You know. Like, yeah. So uh, that, that's why it's banned. Medicine I've seen that is black, and I'm, it's making me wonder if they're confusing it for that. Well, it no, like a, it, it it was it was a due, it was due to a single oh. woman who had cancer. Okay. And and she was taking a journey of her own. And she was using black salve, um, and she was misled. And, and she got a lot of really poor information. So that that poor lady, um, yeah, you can you can look it up. I, she I get sick from it. Um, uh, no, she just it didn't do. She she kept opening the cancer sore and oh. exposing it to air, you know, and she kept doing it and picking it open and deliberately picking it open after it would seal up. And and she was swearing by the black salve and she kept putting it by and and, and eventually got to the point where everybody was swearing by the black salve and then the poor woman oh. died. Um. Oh. So it was like well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then immediately after that, they, you know, they everybody sort of banned black salve and demonized black mm -hmm. salve, and you know, so wow, you got to be careful. Wow, a, okay. a true black salve, a drawing salve. Maybe we'll talk about how to make a drawing salve today. A true black salve is is going to be able to draw the the impurities out. Sometimes it'll even pull out splinters. It softens up the skin and pulls that out. Um, but you just you just got to make it right, and it's not edible. It's a salve. <laughs> Disclaimer. Right. Real quick. So what I did with this, um, on your herbs, if you're going to pick your own herbs, you want to do, I don't know, if you're doing a small batch like this, this is four ounces of oil. Um, I don't know, you want to maybe half ounce of dried herb if you're using leafy types of herbs. If you're using roots, you can you can use a little bit less. Roots are more dense. And, and if you're going to use roots as part of your as part of your blend, make sure you grind them up as much as you can. <laughs> We should talk about that too here. Yeah, we do have the grinder over here. Now, there's different ways you can process your herbs, and you don't necessarily have to go grab a go grab a knife or anything like that to, to maybe cut your fingers. There was a company that reached out to me, and they sent me a a free grinder um, if I would show it on video. And I and I, I looked it up. We him and I discussed which ones I liked, and I I picked the one in particular that I liked. So he mailed that one to me. Um, to show you, you don't have to. Maybe if I can get it open. This is the box opening. The name of this company is Woody Wood Grinders, and I went over to his site. He's got some really cool wooden wooden grinders. Now the problem with the other types of grinders that you get, they're usually made of pewter, and and I don't. I've seen people that have used it. They talk about how it gets like metal shavings and metal flakes um, when when they grind. Yeah. So, Peter's awful for you, you know, it, it's like trying to eat Teflon or something. Uh, oh, I got a cool shirt, too. All right. But here's his, here's his shirt. If you're here, Woody, if you're going to watch. Here's the shirt. Oh, it's backwards, sorry. Grindy. Yeah. Thanks for the shirt, man. That's cool. Thanks for the grinder, too. All right, it comes with this really cool pouch. It says Woody. Yeah, there's a picture on the back of the page too. You can't really see on the video very well. Very nice. Isn't it cool? Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is amazing. So Kelly Kelly donated some of her herbs so we can show you. This is made out of wood. You're not gonna get any shavings in there. Um a little cleaning brush that you can use to clean it out. So we're gonna we're gonna try it out. What do you got here? This looks like roses. Yeah, it's a little flower mix. It's a bouquet of. Uh, Got some bouquet roses. Hmm. It's a floral tea. I'm gonna dip the tea. You can take the teas. Throw it in the grinder. That's gonna smell amazing. Mm -hmm. You grind them up like that. I could probably put that inside. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You yeah. definitely could. Yeah. So we're going to add a little bit extra to this particular salve for the purpose of science, of course. So you just take it and you spin it. Here's the front. And there's 
yours. Just put it right in the sack. Put it in your tea. It's a fairly easy way, especially if you're just going to do a cup of tea. Just think about it. If you're if you're trying to do trying to do a bigger batch and you want to grind it, this is ideal for just a cup of tea. It, it fits in your hand. Um, yeah. And no, he didn't pay me to do this. He sent me this this grinder. You guys want to see it? Yes, sir. Ooh, and it's got a magnet. Yes, it's got a magnet the whole thing. So let's mix this in. So we got some roses. Now, if you're going to add roses to your salve, that's actually a pretty good addition. It's good for your skin. It's healing. It's antimicrobial. It'll get rid of, um, it'll help battle infections. This particular blend has pine needles, Oregon grape, comfrey leaf, mullein leaf, and yarrow. Flower. Thanks for the grinder, Woody. That's pretty, pretty cool. You should go check him out, woodywoodgrinder.com. I, well, I don't know if that's the website. I will put it down in the description. I will get the website, and it will be in the link. You guys can pop on over there. Any advice on choosing roses? Some are more medicinal than others. Um, kind of. That, that's kind of. Um, do the roots need to be dehydrated also? Roots? You well, you, you don't necessarily have to dehydrate any of them. If you're going to use your herbs and they're still green, you can you can use your herbs green, but you got to make sure to cook your oil longer, and you got you got to up your temperature a bit. So instead of doing like the induction heater I have here, I have it sitting at 150 degrees. The reason why I use 150 degrees is if you get it hotter than that, um, you're going to start losing the compounds. Now volatile oils and essential oils will start to evaporate at 177 degrees. So if you can keep your temperature below that, you you run less risk of actually frying your herbs and losing some of the compounds. Now, even 150 degrees is still a little high for some of the compounds. I mean, they are, they are pretty, pretty temperature sensitive uh, for the most part. But if you can keep it around 150 degrees, it's hot enough that it'll, it'll actually pull the, the compounds that you want to get out of the herbs, out of the herbs. Now, for the most part, if you're going to cook your herbs, you want to do it for about three hours on low temperature like that. I just want to know the name of the... Um Grinder company again? Oh, Wood, wood Woody Wood Grinder. W O O D I E. Wood Grinder. You can just do a search for that and he'll, his will pop up. Um, and you, you'll find that. That's the Tiger's Eye. And, and I'm a big Tiger's Eye fan anyway for stones. So as soon as he said that, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta have that one. But, but he's, got, he's got some really good stuff over there. It's a good way to grind your herbs up without getting a lot of impurities in there. I, I don't want pewter in my tea and I certainly don't want to be invest, ingesting that if I'm making capsules or whatever. Lead no. poison or heavy metal poisoning is a real thing. Right. You know? I've been trying to do a um, a bath detox lately. Okay. So that draw out those heavy metals with benzoate clay, Epsom salts, and baking soda. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I noticed uh, some mental clarity since I started doing it. I've only taken two baths so far. No, that's good. It certainly get the helps to get the toxins. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No worries. That's why we're here. <laughs> okay, so the reason why it's taking a little bit longer, ordinarily I would cook the, the set, I would cook the oil for about three hours. I started this before we started the class and started getting everything heated up so it would be all mostly ready. I kind of want to show you the difference. When you start with the oil, your oil, and we're going to talk about the different kinds of oil you can use. Your oil should be, you know, a yellowish color. Right, this base oil that I have here, no sense in trying to it's just reverse. Um, I use avocado oil, grapeseed, flaxseed, and emu oil, and, and the emu oil is just a tiny amount. Now the reason why we use the avocado, grapeseed, and flaxseed is they're all good for your skin. They have lots of vitamin E, and, and they help to uh, replenish a lot of the issues you could potentially get. The emu oil I use because it's an absorbent. It, it goes through all the layers of your skin, and it carries everything that it has with it into where you need it the most anyway. So... Um, you can substitute that with castor oil, which I haven't yet, but I, I, we were just talking about that I will, I will be probably mixing up some different kits and throwing castor oil in those um, because it'll do, it'll do similar. I, personally, I think emu oil works better, but it is more expensive. It, it, it is significantly more. And then if there's other people that don't like it, you know, they're super vegan and, and they don't like any type of meat, any type of meat products. So, you know, you have to kind of look for alternatives when it comes to things like that. And, and there, are, there, are, there are always alternative when it comes to natural substances. There's Do you always have to else. have a blend of different oils in order to make the salve? No. Um, 
you can use you can use just a single herb, but I I am personally not a fan of just using a single herb, and and the reason why is, you know, an herb will have will be able to cover a lot of different types of conditions, but it's still just one herb, and, and if you're trying to use it for like, you know, healing, it's only going to approach it from one one way. It, it only has you know one specific set of compounds. So you get another herb that'll complement those compounds or work in conjunction with them in, in, in a different way. It, it seems to make them more effective, but that's just my own belief on that. So, um, is it still going? We should be able to strain that here in a minute. And then we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how, how you, what you have to do when you get to the beeswax part. You wanna make sure not to put your beeswax in the oil right away. Uh, well, with your herbs, because you're never going to get them separated. You're just going to make a mess. So the beeswax is the last thing you're going to use. Um, when you're making, well, we're going to go through when I do when we do the next the next step that doesn't have any beeswax in it. You're going to have to use one of your oils that that are in there while you're cooking your herbs. But that's only going to be because um, you only have so much oil. Because when it comes to making that, I'm only going to use one ounce of liquid oil and then the rest is going to be the other oils, so we're going to have to use one of those, and I'll, and I'll show you which one's the best for me okay. while we cook them. And of course, that's going to be another shortened version of a salve, but if you get roughly, you know, at least 15 or 20 minutes of cooking, you can get a lot of the compounds out and still make it fairly effective. But three hours seems to be about the average of what's supposed to be good. There have been times that if I've done comfrey, uh, in federal comfrey oil, if I have wet comfrey leaf, I'll do it for a day or two. And the reason why is I want to make sure all the water's out of it, because if you don't, your oil will go rancid very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the water in it does not interact well. Even even though comfrey is technically an antimicrobial, mm -hmm. it's still not going to stop that bacteria from forming. Gotcha. But, all right. So what I did, the easiest way for me to do these, is you can get a mason jar. If you have a big batch, you can use a larger mason jar with a, with a wide mouth lid. And you grab a straining cloth. You can use cheesecloth, you can use um, coffee filter, you can use pretty much any old cotton. This is, the, the ones that come in the kit are just cotton, just a, a plain cotton fabric. The more natural it is, the better it is. But you can just even use a screen if you don't mind a little bit of floaties in it. So you yeah. really buy a mesh screen. <laughs> it probably sh does it shorten the life of the product if it has little floaties in it? Any kind of uh, organic? If they were dry, no, not really. Okay. Because the, they're going to be in the oil. If it were a water base, right, it might it might lead to, to bacterial growth, but not typically not in the oil. Okay. I do that. Make a little ball or bowl. Tighten it on with the lid. <laughs> Sometimes you'll have to, um, if you have a spoon, you'll have to, if, if it's a, whichever herb you choose, if they clog up your, your, uh, your filter bag before you're actually able to use it. So certain herbs, if you're going to use certain herbs, I'm going to give you some examples. Any of the marshmallows, right? You want to avoid, you want to use any of the marshmallows. Um, Whorehound is also a good one. How, I'll, I'll talk in just one second how you how you use those slippery elm any of those you want to you, you'll take those and you'll put them in a separate cloth when you go to cook them because it has mucilage mucilage in it and that mucilage is um, mucilage mucilage it it's it's the slime that 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 coats the the plant once it gets wet and once the water gets to it right so what what that is is it's good for you right it's a good it, it coats stuff but you can't squeeze the water out. And it'll 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 take all your water away. Oftentimes, when I'm if I'm using slippery elm in something, and I have water base, I will add extra water because I know the slippery elm is going to absorb it and keep it. I'm not going to be able to squeeze it out no matter what I do. I gotcha. So you do the you do the slippery elm separate, um, and then you keep your other herbs in there and mixed, and then you kind of squeeze out your slippery elm and just and you're going to have it's going to feel like there's a lot of waste, but and, and there kind of is, but you're going to get a lot of the properties out of it. Just not going to get any of that slime that that you don't need, especially if you're making something like a. You need some of it if you're making like a cough syrup, okay. but you don't need a lot, and and it'll leave a, it, yeah, it'll it'll leave, it'll leave residue when you when you go to take it, it if you take it internally, but externally it'll help remove um, splinters and and other objects because it the mucilage makes everything kind of slippery. 
Is it also a good moisturizer? It's supposed to be. All right, so you'll take it and just pour it through. Oh. Now, here's another trick to this. You want to do it when it's fairly hot. The hotter the oil is, the better it's going to strain that cloth. If you wait and, and you make it to where it's not very, if you wait till it's cold, you're going to make a mess and it's not going to strain very well. See, like this is still straining pretty slow, but it's keeping all the herbs out of the mix itself. Some people call them floaties. Organic matter. Organic potato, matter. potato. Right. If it feels like it's getting clogged up, you can take a spoon and just lightly go across it and that'll open up the pores. The downside to that is some of the tinier particles that are able to get through those pores will get in. So that is the downside to doing it that way. Just lightly go through. If you're using a coffee filter, beware. They are very fragile. Um, and I have ruined, I don't know how many batches of trying to do this and then you go through and you, go, <laughs> you rip it and then you see all, you know, you, yeah. I, just, I just spent 20 I see minutes. my future right before my eyes right. as you tell me that. Spent 20 minutes going through and doing it, and then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm watching all the everything all just fall that. through, right? Ah. So, so another good way to do this, if you don't want to wait through it like this, you can get like a, like one of those mesh strainers that you get for, you know, doing rice or whatever. You can run the herbs through that first. Okay. And then and then run them through your cloth because most of the most of the liquid will be out, and then you can just squeeze it out. But for the sake of the video, I was just a good gonna, strainer. right. Keep all that stuff separate. And then you, you pour the you pour the liquid through your cloth, and then after the liquid is done, then you just put your herbs, the herbs left over in the strainer, in the cloth, and you squeeze those. I have such a bad habit of wanting to press the herbs, and it just clogs and causes more chaos. Yep, you got to scrape. I'm just, like, feeling scrape. very impatient. I'm like, just squeeze it out. <laughs> there have been times that I've had to get a bunch ready because we had a bunch of orders come in. You know, and it's like, oh crap, we don't have any salve made. So I have to make emergency salve, and that, that can... You tend to rush it and I do. push it. The universe just reminds you real quick. Yeah, something reminds me. Oh, yeah. yeah. That order has to go out today. UPS, USPS reminds me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're right by the Cleveland airport, so if you hear planes, sorry. Can't do a lot about that. Oh, yeah. This is back where I used to do construction. We're up, we're up on West 100, around at West 130th Street in Cleveland, and if this was a little hotter, I kept the oil at about 150. You can put your oil up to about 160, 165, but if you, if you hear it start to crackle and pop, or if it starts bubbling and steaming, um, turn your temperature down. If you're on the stove and you don't have the ability to be able to regulate your heat, get a thermometer. I, I would really recommend getting a thermometer. You know, and they're not that expensive. Get like a meat thermometer or something, or get something to make sure that, that it can go down as low as we need it to be. Because that's the other thing we're going to talk about here in a minute will be um, the beeswax. Just wondering about that. Yeah. We're going to have to brew another pot. Oh, I have. A, I brought paper towels specifically for that reason. <laughs> Proper fire planning. If you see, oh, I'll show you. Not something you'd want to take. I mean, it's edible. You could eat it. But that's what it looks like. Mmm, hello, tasty. <laughs> Technically, it's edible. I don't know that I'd want to take it off. Chutney. Put it on my lamb. So, what herbs did I use? All right, so anybody ask what herbs I used? Anybody want to know why I used the herbs that I did? Should I explain that? The, someone was asking about the medicinal purposes of the rose and which rose would be better if you had a preference. I don't. I personally think if it has like different properties of what you're seeking to Here's, utilize, you know, then that would really dictate. Uh, the, avoid the ones that come from the store that are sprayed. Correct. But, but that there's also a caveat to that. They are, they are now starting to have those same roses come to the store organic. Because you know they have a different smell, they are more expensive. Um, it is a market for that. So if you want to use a different rose, you can use you can use a store bought one as long as you know that it's organic. If it's been organic, there's no chemicals on it, hasn't been sprayed, and it'll have a lot of the same properties. But personally, I prefer wild roses. You know because that that comes from nature. It's the least tampered with one that we have, um, for the most part. And 
I think that those have the, the best property. And they grow everywhere. If you can get some wild rose bushes, you can do everything. You can you can do stuff with the leaves. If you can get the petals, you can use the petals and infuse your oils and stuff. Um, and then at the end, you get the rose the rose hips, the little red hips at the end. Mm -hmm. Those are super nutritious. Yeah, loaded with vitamins. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we're almost there. Sorry to make you wait. Kelly was going to break into her kit, and she was like, I want to make some right now. I'm like, no. She goes, well, I want some sab to come away with the, with the kit. And I'm like, well, I'm going to make sab with it. You can have it. Well, I don't have any use for it. Definitely the perch. I like to play in the mud, though, so to speak. Yeah. I want to know how the sausage is made. Yes. Now, the good thing about this, this sab, because there's emu oil in it, emu soaks in, you put this on, and it'll soak in fairly quickly, and it doesn't leave a residue. That, that's one of the reasons why I like emu oil so much. If you put it on, and you, and you put it in within just a few, it depends on how dry your skin. If your skin's really dry, within two or three minutes, it'll absorb into your skin, and, and you're not dry anymore. It'll feel moisturized. If you have essential oil on it, it'll actually keep the smell of that essential oil for hours after, because it goes straight through the layers. And it's there. You can't wash it off because by the time you try to wash it off, it's already been, it's already absorbed in. Yeah. It acts like a natural DMSO What's in that, that way. The DMSO? DMSO, dimethyl, I don't, I don't know the exact chemical name, but um, it's uh, what they use, veterinarian, veterinarians will use it to put medications on horses and stuff. And and some people will use it too. You can take DMSO and, and put herbs or whatever in it make, and then put that on it'll take it in. The problem with it is it's a chemical. Right. So I don't like necessarily putting a chemical like that, you know, or, or risking putting a chemical like that. Uh, it's good enough for your horse, I guess, but I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm willing to try that. <laughs> right. They have, Someone wants to know what all the herbs you are using right now. Okay, so now we have roses too, apparently. All right, so I'm going to go down the list. Thanks, that's a good question. Who was that? Um, that was Ari. All right. Ari Cloud. I started the heal this particular blend that I made, it, it comes with the kit, is uh, pine needles. Now the reason why I used pine is it was very plentiful at our yard because we had a windstorm go through and it was the easiest one to grab. And pine has shikimic acid, which is really which is known to be antimicrobial. Pine is also very healing. It's known to help heal the, the skin cells a little faster. They've done studies on, on how pine can help with uh, like uh, people who use it in their anti-aging compounds because it, it helps rejuvenate the skin um and it smells good i mean if you like pine trees <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry the next one is oregon grape now oregon grapefruit is an antibacterial as well it's also a healing herb but it's the second most powerful antibiotic in the world um medicinal herbal antibiotic in the world it's it's next after uh golden seal golden seal is more powerful than than the oregon grape now, Oregon grape has a lot of berberine in it. I'm sure you've probably heard of berberine. Yeah. It has terpene as well. These are also these are known to help heal. They also help to balance your um, balance your DNA. So sometimes you can have structural damage if you get an infection that'll that'll that affect your DNA in that, in that particular area, and it'll help to uh, stabilize that. Let's see, the next one was comfrey leaf. Now I picked comfrey leaf because it's super plentiful. If you can grow comfrey around your house, the cool thing about that is we can get comfrey up here. And you guys can trim it back. You can get up to 36 pounds of leaf a year per plant oh, by trimming it back. It's Holy cow. It, it's also used as a as a natural fertilizer because it has the big three: magnesium, phosphorus, and. I recently heard that as well. Yes, yeah. and it balances the soil and, and, and gives it, nutrients back. Yeah, it pulls. It, well, the roots go so deep. What the what the roots will do is they'll get down the normal layer of soil and get down into where all the, the minerals are, and they'll pull them up. And then if you if you get some comfrey, you'll notice the grass and everything all around the comfrey is it's just amazing. The, the soil around it'll be. And if you take the leaves and you throw leaves in buckets of water and just let them just let them sit for a while, you can take those leaves and just take like a cup of it, put it in a five gallon bucket, and use it to fertilize anything. It, it, it's Very got. Yeah. And then everybody was worried about the, the 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 fertilizer shortage, and I was like, you got comfrey. You know, you got a plant that grows thirty six pounds of leaf a year per plant. You right. know, and then it, it it's considered one of the best fertilizers in the world. So. And it, it works medicinally. They've right. done, they've done it's bone knit. It is known as bone knit, and but it's also, but not to be confused with bone set. Okay, so okay. you're you're gonna see there's bone set, which will have very angular leaves. It gets fairly tall. It has white blossomy flowers on the ends. And and if you go down my timeline, any of my videos, you'll see that I've talked about bone set. Um, 
but this they're very similar. They have the same they have the same compounds. They do the same thing as far so as healing goes. Bunnies love uh, comfrey too. They do. Yeah. They do. Our goats won't eat them if they're in the ground, but if you harvest it and hang it, they'll eat it then. Oh right. Because we, we were trying to save. It. Amy went and picked I don't know, probably ten pounds of comfrey last year. And the goats got through where she had them hanging and ate all of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a lot of work that she went through. Word. So, comfrey heals wounds faster, too. Now, the problem with comfrey, there was a problem with comf uh, the problem with the healing part of it. It heals wounds up to 30% faster. It not only knits the, it, on a cellular level, right? So, so, your skin, your muscles, your tendons, you know, if they're ripped or damaged, it'll heal that up to 30% faster. They've also seen in clinical trials that it works on bones, it'll, it'll knit bone knit it'll heal a bone um up to 30 percent faster too than it would normally without any type of um other help that you would get so it that that's one of the reasons why i chose that one now the problem with it is it heals so, so fast you have to have something like castor oil emu oil something that absorbs to get the comfrey in deep because mm -hmm. it will heal the wound on the outside before it gets to the inside okay. if you don't do it right and you, have to, you run the risk at that point of having an infection stay inside where the, the wound outside is all healed oh, and stuff. So, you know, you need something that's going to be an absorbent if you're going to use comfrey. Um, even even some like a, a Epsom salt would work too because it, it does help absorb. Okay, so, that makes, okay, that makes a lot of sense. You could do a comfrey bath tea. Um, Danielle, um, or Diane Kelly wants to know if you recommend anything for drying your herbs before you use them. Yes and no. I mean, okay, so there's some people that there's there's a there's a few different schools of thought on that. There's some people that will tell you that you shouldn't use a dehydrator, right? And and in in most cases, if it's if you get one of the cheap dehydrators that um, one of the cheap ones that you know blows at 180 degrees and it stays super hot, and you can't touch it. Yeah, avoid those. Um, the reason why is they'll they'll get they get so hot that they'll blow all your compounds out. But if you can get, and those these ones are fairly cheap. I, we got ours at Rural King, or mother-in-law mother got ours at, at Rural King for um, like 16 bucks. And it's a variable speed, or variable variable temperature, variable time. So you can even set your own time. If you want it to do uh, 24 hours, you just put it on 24 hours, it'll run straight for 24 hours, and you, you control your temperature. So if you can get your temperature controlled and keep it to about 135 degrees, give or take, that will keep the compounds, most of them in. And if you keep your herbs as whole as possible, that'll also keep the compounds in too. Okay. So if you can do, you know, if you can manage to throw whole leaves on there, or if you can do them comfrey, comfrey has leaves this big, right? Mm. So you're not going to throw a comfrey leaf, but if you cut them into smaller sections and then you get it on the dehydrator in such a way that there's airflow and you can get everything dried. Um, yeah, you could, you can get whole leaves. And then when you go to use them later, like in a salve, and you go to grind them up, a lot of those compounds will still be saved, saved in the herb. Mm. Trying to get all the oil out of there. All right, next I got was the next one I have on my list is mullein leaf. Uh, mullein is an anti-inflammatory herb. Typically speaking, mullein is a lung herb. So if you want to, if you want to, it, it's been used around the world to uh, combat tuberculosis and and other lung conditions. Other COPD. I used to quit smoking recently, and it worked like a charm. I mixed mullein with lavender. Okay. And I made it an herbal cigarette to supplement That's me what I did. through my withdrawal. Yep. And it worked like a, a charm. Right. And yeah. It's been since since September. I smoked for about thirty years, and I mean it is. I'm recovered smoker. Yeah. I haven't smoked. I quit smoking a while back too. Mm -hmm. Actually, I quit smoking cigarettes after Amy's heart attack. Mm -hmm. Right. So I quit smoking tobacco at that point. So what I started doing then was what Kelly would suggest. What Kelly said, she's not suggesting anything. What Kelly said was um, she used herbs, just plain herbs in her for her substitute for um, tobacco. She used mullein and which? Lavender. Mullein and lavender, but you can use you know you can use any there's of them. There's a mint. plethora. Yeah, sure, so right? you can use pretty much any of these herbs we talked about. Uh, slippery elm is also really good um, as a substitute. Um, I'm not saying to smoke it, but I'm just saying you can use it as a substitute. And then you were che uh, chewing on the licorice root. Licorice oh, root. Correct. Yes. I was if you're a male, avoid yes, for yeah. the oral fixation. I was chewing on licorice root as if, well. If you're a male, that's not an option for you. Um, find oh. find cinnamon. Uh, licorice is loaded with phytoestrogens. So, um, if men are trying to keep their estrogen levels down, that is not the herb for you. Okay. Um, that would that would be very counterintuitive for what you're trying to accomplish. So, make sure that if you um, 
if you're trying to do something like that, don't, and you're a guy, and you're trying to keep your testosterone up, don't do that plant. <laughs> don't be oh, sorry. That's good to know, there's, eh? there's a lot of plants you got to try to avoid. You make sure there's, there's a lot of them that have phytoestrogens. I don't, I don't have the, the, all the list on, right offhand, but I was taking right. a lot. Yeah, I, I was I was gonna start taking licorice root until I did some research, and I was like, oh, that's gotcha. really not, not a good idea. I just use it for a temporary period of time. I find I don't even need that anymore. Yeah. You know, I keep it in my purse for like an emergency if like I'm out drinking or something. Right. That's always got me historically. Uh, you know? you, but I, I digress. I, there's actually some questions here. Right? Um, first of all, Tim S wants to know if a French press would be feasible for separating the oils and the herbs. Absolutely, sure. That's a good way to do that, and then you can still put them in your cloth to squeeze them out. Because inevitably, you're going to want to squeeze the herbs, right? You're going to have to do some sort. Of, hey, there, Derek. All right, so inevitably, you're going to have to do. Hey, Derek. You're going to have to do some sort of compression because so, you're going to want to try to squeeze as much of this out as possible. Now, what I've managed to do while I was playing with it is I've kind of turned it into a ball, where a lot of the oil has been separated. What was that question? Um, Tracy wanted to know if um, if you use a tincture for your herbs first and then add the tincture to your salves. You can. Or, yeah. Um, yep. So, okay. Make sure you cook your water and your alcohol out of it, though. So, at that point, you're going to have to keep your temperature a little higher. <laughs> Say, um, like, 175. Can I ask a question? So, I've also recently heard of a triple extract. So then you take this stuff mm -hmm. and then you dry that and burn it and then add the ash. I heard it's supposed to have even more like quali um, medicinal qualities. Have you heard of this, or do you? I, do I don't you know that it will have that? more. I, I know that I know that biochar tends to have um, some some medicinal prop, good good medicinal compounds, but it, it'll still maintain some of the compounds because I mean we're not going to get all the compounds out of it when we're done with it, right? So you could you could put it down to a fine ash, but inevitably you're still going to have to strain it, right? And well, oh, okay. So you wouldn't add the ash um, into the salve? I wouldn't. Not for a salve like that. Okay. Um, well, or you might... a tincture. Yeah, because mm -hmm. also I heard tincture as well. You could, I, but... Okay, so... Do we want to sidetrack on... Oh, I am sorry. I probably shouldn't. I... Alright, so real quick. If you're going to get an alcohol tincture, an alcohol extract for about 99% of herbs is most effective for extracting the compounds out of an out of a, out of a herb. Milk, milk thistle is one of my best examples. Um, milk thistle isn't necessarily bioavailable if you just eat it raw. Seed milk thistle seed isn't necessarily as bioavailable if you take it as a tea, because there's think of it as a bubble, right? Uh, a capsule. Okay, so think of a capsule. Well, that that shell that's around the capsule doesn't dissolve. Um, which is where a lot of the silymarin is, um, that capsule doesn't dissolve in water. So you have the silymarin, you're eating the silymarin, you're ingesting the silymarin, you're not getting it bioavailable because it's just going right through your system. Your digestive system is also not enough to break through those little tiny capsules. I'm just trying to explain it as simple as possible and before we get too far off topic. Um, alcohol will dissolve that. And then that, that more of that silymarin is available. So you can do that, but if you're going to use it in an oil-based salve, you have to cook it down to where there's no water, okay. right? Because if you put water in it again, it's going to go right back to that same. You can add water to it, say, if you wanted to make a cream, but it's going to go rancid faster. So that at that point, you would use something else other than water, aloe vera or, or some other liquid substance that's not just plain water. But you can't. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of adding anything burnt after the fact. Okay. Um, because the, it was something that was new that has been brought to my attention. I hadn't heard of it before. I thought that maybe, especially since we would have had the material to do that, you right. know, that extra extraction. I, I don't know that it would necessarily get anything more out of here. Okay. I, I think you pretty much got everything out of it, depending on what you were doing. Like if we're cooking it here, the compounds are going to come out because the heat will help break those little those little bubbles. Okay. Um, but. The oil will do it too, but you don't typically put like milk thistle seed in, into a, a salve, right? That, right that's something right. you would ingest. But mm -hmm. but some of those compounds, it just I don't know. I, I suppose you could. I, I don't I don't see anything against it. That's kind of using everything. Mm -hmm. But you could turn it into compost, and I think it'd be more beneficial. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> hey. That's good to know, though. Because, right. Yeah. Right, because you know, I mean, and you could probably encapsulate that mm -hmm. that powder, and you would still get some of the compounds, but. Um, and probably even take care of some gas. So when you get it through your straining cloth, 
you'll see that it's still kind of maybe you probably can on the camera yeah you should can stop me just squeeze the hotter you do this but obviously if you get too hot you're going to burn yourself so common sense is warranted here but the hotter you do this the easier it is to get this out and then by the time you're done can you tell i've done this before <laughs> Take some stresses out from the week. Right. Why are you little? It's disgusting. <laughs> and then at the end, when you're all done straining, you won't have any floaties in your oil. But you will have a big ball of herbs. Should be like, should be a pretty decent clump. This you can throw in your compost. You can, you can do pretty much whatever you want to with it. There's oil left over if you use gloves, that's great. My hands are really dry, so I need it. Yeah. And there's already evil oil in it, so it's gonna soak in. These will this will do if you get it on your hands, it'll do up to your elbows easily. Probably sound terrible in there. <laughs> no, you're doing that new what was that called? Like that audience. Um, right, you're getting that 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 whole lived in experience, guys. Yeah. You're here live. Alright, so we're gonna put this back up. Now we're gonna use beeswax for this one. But when you do your beeswax, you can do this two different ways. If you're in a hurry, if you're in a hurry and you want it, you want it to dry very fast, put half of your oil back in the pan. Leave the other half out. Put your beeswax in with the oil that you're heating up. Heat it up. Pour the cold oil in, and then pour it. But you're gonna have to be quick because it'll it'll get to a point where it'll um, it'll dry on you. I call it drying. It'll dry on you before you have an opportunity to actually pour it. So take your oil. It's been infused. You notice the difference in the color? Here's the color here. And there it was when it started. So we've infused a lot of the medicinal properties of the herbs into the oil. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Add that right back in there. This oil you can use if you, if you don't use it all. Um, and you don't want it to go to waste, you can put it on your hands, you can use it as a paste. It, it'll go a long way. It might not look like much on the inside of the jar, but I'm telling you that is a lot of that's a lot of oil residue-wise in there. That's our question. Yes, yes it is part um, emu oil. Uh, they wanted to know the list of the oh, oils. Go to the oils. All right. Um, we'll do that. Oh wait, we didn't cover yarrow. We also covered the last flower in there. I'm sorry, my bad. The last flower in there is yarrow. Yarrow is an anticoagulant. I should have, that's like one of the most main herbs. It's a healing herb too, right? Roman soldiers used to carry yarrow with them into battle and they would use it in order to staunch wounds when they got wounded. Um, burns like heck. If you be advised, if you get a cut and you decide to grab some yarrow flower and throw it on that cut, you're gonna you're only going to do it once, okay? And and you're going to be sorry that you did it, but it will stop the bleeding, right? It'll it'll definitely stop the bleeding, but it's going to feel like fire. Um, now, but it's also known to really heal wounds fast. It'll get in it's antimicrobial, so it helps fight an infection. It'll help pull out, you know, it's a good drawing salve, so it'll pull out stuff from deeper inside. And then of course the last herb that we had was thanks to Woody Woodgrinder grinding it up for us, um, was just some roses. some roses. We got yes. some rose, just whole rose buds that Kelly had uh, harvested last year and you could use the ones that grow around your house if you have roses that grow around your house you can cut off those flowers and use those if you cut them off above the rose hip the rose hip will go uh, it'll eventually go ripe in the fall it'll turn red and then you can harvest those too and then cut cut the roses back and it'll all come back next year yeah. so when you oh the oils right so there's the flowers the oils the base oil blend that I picked it is, no sense in even showing you because it's backwards. Um, I picked avocado oil. Avocado is loaded with vitamin E. It's really good for your skin. It's been, it's known to help like add more collagen and, and make the skin younger and, and more elastic. Grapeseed oil is a good anti, antibacterial, anti analgesic. It, it's somewhat of a soothing and a pain reliever. Also good for your skin. Flaxseed oil is really beneficial. It's got all sorts of nutrients that will actually absorb into the skin itself and help neutral, um, new, add nutrients to your skin and help replenish that you know because when you have a wound that's healing you kind of need some flexibility around there yes, so the, sure. the more the this oils will help keep that flexibility and keep it supple 
And then of course there's the emu oil, which is which is for those of you who don't know, an emu is a giant bird that looks like an ostrich. Um and it's it's the, the oil that comes out of the meat after they've processed the meat. So it's kind of similar to bacon and bacon fat. I, <laughs> there's no way to sugarcoat that. Um but you know, they, they have records dating back forty thousand years back in caves and stuff of them actually rendering down emu for both food and medicine. So 40,000 years is a long time. Yes, it is. The indigenous people have such wisdom. Yeah, there's a reason why they survived that long. <laughs> yeah. Now, see that oil that I put on my hands? You can't really tell, but my hands aren't oily. I mean, I just grabbed that brag that it was loaded with oil, mm -hmm. and it doesn't leave an oily residue. So you don't have to worry about leaving oily fingerprints all over everything. We're going to turn this thing back on. When you heat up your oil, I'm going to put it all in there because I don't care how fast it dries. It gives me more time to talk. Um, you want beeswax melts at 144 degrees. So I'm going to put this at 150. And how you do it, temperature. There we go. How you do it, you can add your beeswax before or after. I mean, it's kind of kind of indifferent. But if you're using beads, smaller beads like this, make sure you stir them as soon as you put them in the oil. Like start stirring okay. immediately. All right. Or they will clump up and you'll just have one big clump of beeswax on the bottom of your on the bottom of your pan. So kind of just a regular spoon will do. Yep, regular, regular old spoon, spoon will do. Spoon? Right in the jar there. Mm -hmm. okay. If you use bigger chunks, keep them separated or they'll, they they tend to want to like go together. They'll come together like um like a magnet. I missed that. Somebody said something. Someone like. said they're honored to be here in your, your workshop today. I'm glad you're here. Now, the cool thing about the beeswax is the beads are small, so they'll, they'll melt fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Once they start to shrink and you see a noticeable difference in the size as you're stirring, which they are, you look, they're a different size. Can you see? Yes. They're, they're much smaller, little tiny particles. That's when you turn off your heat. That's when you can turn off your heat because it's already melted. It's not going to get any, it's not going to melt. It's going to continue that process. Um, Keep stirring, keep it going. You want to make sure that it's well stirred because I, I have ports to have that was not well stirred and you'll have one that's a soupy mess and then you'll have another one that's harder than lip balm oh. and oh yeah, it makes a it makes a definite difference. You got to make sure that it's very, very well stirred. Now, I wants to know if she could use lard to make a salve. Um, I'm actually going to show you that if you, if you be patient, we're going to go through the other way of making a salve without using beeswax. Uh, that, that's part of what we're going to do today. And yeah. it was Woody Woodgrinder that said it was an honor to be on the show. Today. Oh, thank you, Woody. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I ignored his name. Thank Sorry, you for the Woody. thank thank you for the grinder, man. It's it's a really awesome grinder. It's even more impressive in person. So and and we used it today to grind up our roses, and that was actually part of our salve. So as you can see, it's all melted. Kind of see, I know it's hard. I don't want to pour it all over everything. Once it's melted, you start pouring it in your tins. Be careful when you pour it in your tins because your tins will have a little rim on the inside. Don't go all the way to the rim. At times it'll go, it'll bubble over and then you'll have a hard time getting your lid on. I think that bird that was just going was actually a woodpecker. Oh. I think that's a shout out to you, Woody. There's a woodpecker. Just I just heard it calling on the other side of the roof here. <laughs> your spirit animal has arrived. Yeah, he was very noisy. Yeah. He said he appreciates you. I appreciate it very much. All right. This one only gave us a two ounce, a two one ounce tins, and they're not all the way full. They're not going to harden right away because they'd make it fairly hot. But after a while, they're going to harden, and you're going to see that 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 when these harden, you know, it's going to be yellow. It's going to be that yellow. Oh, when they harden, it's gonna so it's gonna okay. look. Um, when you don't put anything in it at all, when this hardens, it should be it'll be not really super dark, but it'll it'll definitely be like a greenish tint. When you first put this this particular blend in the oil, it will bubble, and and that's because I when I when I did the pine, I ground it up pretty fine, so the bubbles will help. And it, you're not burning it, right? If you keep it down, you're not burning it right away. If it crackles and pops, you're burning it. If it bubbles, you're fine. Does that makes sense. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Bubbles, no troubles. Right. right. That's how we're going to remember it. 
and you keep your heat as low as possible. If you have a gas stove, you know, it could be a problem to get it really super low. If it starts, <clears throat> okay, so you use three hours. If you start at noon, if you've had to turn it off, like if it starts to bubble and you turn it off and let it cool off, right, and then you turn it back on, mm -hmm. you still stop at three. Okay. Regardless. No matter how many times you, you know, you had to start it up and stop. A, it's a waste of your time to do more. And B, three hours is three hours. Okay. You know, because as it's cooling off, it's still hot. Gotcha. So it's still pulling the properties out. And, you know, so you're still going to, you're still going to have that. It's still going to be able to, to um, pull the properties out. But you're not going to be wasting six hours of your time because, oh my God, I keep making it too hot. Because, you know, the stove isn't going to cooperate. Electric can be kind of touchy too. That's why I got... I got the, the new wave, new wave live, live well for less, um, the induction heater. And so far, so good. This is, I bought it specifically for doing this, this video, one video that I'm not going to get paid for. <laughs> but, you know, I get to, I get to show people how to, how to make a salve. Um, now, the next salve you have, when, if you buy the kit, you have to pick your own herbs. You get everything you need to make a kit, um, except the herbs. You got to go pick them yourself. Did I miss a question? Oh, thumbs up. Okay. No, they're just chatting. Do you see anybody says Sarah in there? There's Sarah in there. No, I let me scroll up a bit. Oh, it's not touch screen. <laughs> <laughs> not everything is your telephone coming. No, I'm joking. My there we go. So while that cools, we're going to talk about the other way to make a salve without having to use any type of beeswax. And it, you can still make it'll be it'll still be kind of hard. It won't be nearly it won't be as hard as if you use beeswax, but it'll it'll be a good alternative. We're gonna do all the same things we did, but we're gonna we're gonna remove a couple steps, and I'll probably put one of these kits together too. We'll see. I didn't see a Sarah. No, yes, and he can concurs. No, Sarah. Oh, just show up. Okay. So, if you're going to go ahead and try to make a salve and you're allergic to bees and you can't have bee products, you can, you can use alternative substances. This is coconut oil. I've kept it in a cooler to keep it hard because when, when I initially got it out. The thing about <laughs> coconut oil is it will get soft at about 78 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, you keep it at room temperature. temperature. Right. So, you can't just use coconut oil for your base. Mm -hmm. Lard, same thing. If you get lard, it gets out to 70, 78 degrees and lard, and lard still doesn't really get that hard. Okay. Not, not even, even you know, unless you freeze it, it doesn't really get hard like you would expect a balm or a sap to be. So, so um, that's not necessarily a good alternative. Now, I kept it in there so it didn't stay stuck in, in the plastic bag while we get ready to use it. But this is going to be the one, actually, I might as well go ahead. And we'll talk about that, too. This is going to be the one that we're going to use to um, to do the sap. Now, I have one ounce of coconut oil. It's just one ounce. Everything's been weighed out. We're still going to use the same four ounces. We're just not going to do four ounces of base oil. We're going to do four ounces of mixed oils. So take the four ounces of coconut oil. And then you take about an ounce of your regular oil. And you want to get those started with your herbs. Now when you use your pans, there's several different varieties of pans. One thing you should avoid, avoid Teflon. Teflon, non-stick, you don't want those. You don't want cast iron. You don't want aluminum. You, you, those are just herb, or those are just metals you don't want to use when you're doing your salves. Because they, you're gonna, if you use aluminum, you're gonna get heavy, you're gonna get the heavy metals that are gonna break off of that. Um, Teflon is awful for you. It, yes, it has, it, a million it, different ways. Right. Um, cast iron, the problem with cast iron, though it's good for you, it's not necessarily good for you if you're trying to um, make a sap. Right, make a sap. Because you're going to get iron particles in it and then you run the risk of it getting must, rusty or, ah. or causing other problems. So, hmm. yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. So, you, stainless steel. It's like this one here, stainless steel. I picked it up at the dollar store for like 10 bucks or something. Um, and we're going to turn the temperature down on that. The temperature on this, I'm going to put it at about 130 degrees because I have one ounce of our base oil, one ounce of coconut oil. Coconut oil gets really, really viscous and watery when you get it hot. I don't know if anybody's actually cooked or used coconut oil for anything. Once the coconut oil is all melted, we'll get to there, it's not there yet.
once the coconut oil is melted, it'll mix well with this base oil. It'll mix well with most base oil. Um, if you're gonna pick your oils, there's another thing we should probably talk about, huh? All right, so you're gonna pick your oils. Certain oils you should avoid. Canola oil, corn oil, vegetable oil, um, cheap olive oil. So that's the oil, the olive oils that, that are the ones that are roughly about the same price as you would pay for the canola oils or some of the other cheaper oils. Avoid those. Yeah, unfortunately, in this particular instance, you're gonna have to pay for quality. I basically only cook with coconut oil, butter, and oil with that. Oh yeah, Derek, I no doubt. Hi, Cindy. Cindy was going to be there with us today. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know, I know. Now the downside to me putting the coconut oil in the in the cooler was it got so hard, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to uh, to melt. So we have one ounce of coconut oil. We have one ounce of our base oil. The other thing that I brought, you kind of saw it, was Play-Doh looking stuff. Shea butter. Shea butter is really good for your skin. It absorbs in fairly well. It's rather gummy, but it mixes well with oil. And it stays hard at about, I think it's about 90 degrees, I think, is when shea butter will start getting a little bit more soft. But you're going to want to mix that in. And this oil is going to be super yellow because that, that shea butter is, is uh, yeah, very, very, as you saw, it was like Play-Doh yellow. And it kind of smells, this, this shea butter smells kind of cocoa-y. It smells kind of like it, it has cocoa. It smells very good, actually. All right. How much shea butter did you need? One ounce of shea butter. It's going to be one ounce of each of these four, to be, to be as accurate as I can. So, you know, and you just double it. So if you're going to do an eight ounce batch, obviously you do two ounces of each. The last but not least is our cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is the hardest out of all of them. It smells amazing. Really good for your skin, highly nourishing. Here, want to take a whiff? Yes, please. Before we put it in there. They're going to smell it cooking. Pass it around. Everybody get a hump. <laughs> Yeah, if you've never smelled cocoa butter, it smells like really good chocolate. It just really yeah. does. A reasonable thing. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. I was letting you smell it before oh, we had to use it. She's trying to yeah. stash it. <laughs> yeah, here she's trying to steal your guys' cocoa butter. Women and chocolate, you, you know. That? <laughs> all right. Once you have all four of those mixed in, I mean, I probably should have. That's what we're going to do. Let me pull the cocoa butter out. That was not proper fire planning. Pull the cocoa butter out. Use the first three, the shea butter, the uh, the oil. Shea butter, the oil, and what was the other thing? Shea butter, the oil, oh, coconut oil. And then add your herbs. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit more on this. So it'll cook a little faster. Are you gonna leave like the recipe in the yeah, I will. Well, I mean, if they buy the kit, they'll have that recipe. Oh, right. And then, um, but as far as the shea butter part, yeah, uh, I'll definitely write that down. I was just wondering, um, Jill Up said she was taking notes, so I didn't know if, like, maybe later there would be, like, something. Well, I do know that the how, how to make your own salve instructions will be posted on my Patreon page. So I have a Patreon page, The Herb Guy. So those instructions will be available for any patron, any, any of the patrons that are over there. Um, if you do go to my Patreon page, there's a lot of free stuff. There's over three, uh, 30 free articles, things from, you know, like how to make uh, flea terminator dog biscuits for your dog, to uh, poison ivy lotion. There's a dandelion lotion in there. And I think uh, how to make an actual alcohol extract or an alcohol tincture. 
it, that, all that's free on the Patreon. And there's a lot of stuff that's not free on Patreon, but but those those important things are kind of free. You add your herbs to the okay. to the mess. Jill said she is a Patreon member. Okay, yeah, I'll be having it posted over there, and you guys will have that available to you to to copy and paste. I'll try to make sure I make it a little bit more clear in regards to the weights and measures and everything, so that way you guys have an accurate means of being able to make this yourself. But I'll put it in Word format, like I do with those, and you'll be able to download it as a Word document, yeah. and, and then you have it for your own notes. Yeah. Your book of shadows. Well, I'm, it's kind of funny. I'm working on a book right now. It's uh, 30 years of recipes. So all the different recipes that I've come up with in the last 30 years, I'm putting them into one book. And then the other, for those of you who follow along on TikTok, you know that I'm working on a 50-state series. I'm doing three herbs for each yeah. state. And the 150 herbs that I have once I'm done with that will also be, I'm compiling them as I go, but they're going to be compiled into a book as well. So it'll be 150 herb, herb book, you know, which is quite a lot yeah. for an herb book. A lot of them you have like 80 or 90 maybe. And this one will cover, you know. Now the downside to that, to the 50 state series, is not all of the herbs um, are necessarily native to that state. Oh, but they yeah. but they could be agricultural crops, or they could grow well because, you know, well, yeah, well, and there's a lot of herbs that, that we have here that aren't necessarily scientifically documented. And there's also a lot of herbs that we use on a daily basis that people know that aren't here in the United States. So sure. if, if we can grow them agriculturally, even though it's not native to that particular state, we grow it here agriculturally, it grows in that state, I can use it as part of the, the series and still be able to continue. Because right now I, I, I hurried up and I went and got Nevada done or new... New Jersey. I went through and hurried up and finished New Jersey, and then I realized I'd forgotten New Hampshire. So I had to go back. So New Jersey's done and ready, but I can't do it. I have to I have to go back. And I, 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 I have a feeling that some people from New, Jer New Hampshire would have been like, what the heck, dude? Yeah, just skip right over. <laughs> you done, you're done skip my He's state. patiently awaiting. <laughs> Rude. Right. Don't listen to the herb guy. <laughs> When I was a kid and I watched Rob Rubberman, I was waiting to hear my name always. Miss Molly always let me go. <laughs> so, when we hear our familiar things, we're waiting, we're perked up for it. Still mixing it. It'll, it'll also come out fairly green when it's done. Now, the greener your herbs are, the, the more it's going to affect the color of your sap. So, if you get something that's been dried for six months or something, um, and you go to use it in your herb. Don't be surprised if it doesn't if it doesn't draw a lot of the color out. If you don't get a lot, of, then don't be disappointed either. If you don't get a lot of the color out, but if you have a cut and sifted, I wildly recommend that you turn it into a powder as mu or powder it as much as you can. You know, don't break out the mortar and pestle and go to that extreme. But throw it in a you know uh, a blender. You know, well the grinder is a good start for like leaves and stuff. But when you need to get down to the, the smaller things, don't use this wood grinder with roots, right? This is a good wood grinder, but you're going to use some of the roots. Burdock root would probably just, you know, wood against wood. You know, burdock is, is when you get a little bit older, it gets hard. So, you know, you don't want to use the, yeah, you definitely don't want to use harder roots with this. You want to stick with your aerial. It's my little uh, bullets. Like bullets. bullets, yeah, ninja, yeah. Um, a blender. Oh, like uh, dried mushrooms in there, too. Coffee oh, coffee yeah. grinder. Coffee, coffee yeah. grinder's ideal, too. If you have an old uh, coffee yes. grinder that you don't use coffee for your coffee, yeah, it, it works pretty well for getting it pretty small. Um, but be advised, it, if you use it a lot for your herbs, you'll wear it out fast. So mm -hmm. it, it doesn't take very long to wear one of them out mm -hmm. when you start putting things that aren't coffee in it, as I've discovered over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't tell you many of those things I've destroyed over the years. I'm just saying, let you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using my experience so you guys can learn ahead of time all the mistakes that I've made. Doesn't take too long for it to get hard, as you can see, it's kind of greenish, definitely not yellow anymore. Did I miss a comment? Is it going to be okay? So once it's chickweed, that stuff turns to on oil green. Chickweed, and it's a really good healing herb, that, that's not very hard though, yet. Yeah, it'll get hard. Surface. It smells nice and herby, clean. I don't know. Maybe what should I do? Should I make do a do a freebie and say the best comment and gets a gets a free sale, send this ad out? Because you guys are going to get you guys are going to have all this extra left over. Mm -hmm. So. 
I'm sure they would appreciate it. Right. Who would, who, would, who, who, would, who would be willing to want a free salve? Um, somebody, uh, Ari said that they're preparing a, a birch bark oil right now. Ooh. And they're hoping if you could quickly touch on some properties of the birch. It's, it's antimicrobial. This is anti-inflammatory. I was just, actually, it's funny that it's, it's going to be up in the New Hampshire. It, yeah, it's, it's in the New Hampshire. Uh, <laughs> Full circle. Right. Um, no, it, it's antimicrobial, good anti-inflammatory herb. You can you can take it internally. It's good for like ulcers and digestive issues. It, it has in every every part of that plant animal the, the leaves, the, the bark. But the bark is the easiest because the bark sheds, yes. right? So you, you know it, 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 that's the easy one of the easiest you can plants. Tap a birch too, can't you? Huh? A tap of birch. Yeah, a actually, it's water. supposed to be it's supposed to be one of the best filters in the world. You can put a tap like you would a maple filter and just fill up the water and drink that. Um, but yeah, you could you could easily you could easily use birch for for a lot of different things. Um, it's easy to store, but keep it whole if you can. If you you know put it in like, if some people don't like to use Ziplocs, but uh, keep it as whole as you possibly can before you use it. And then when you get ready to use it, break off small check chunks okay. and then grind it up. Um, they have even shown some recent studies, and I'm not sure exactly which cancers it was. I have to go back over and read the studies again, but it, it's been shown to be helpful against some forms of cancer. At least when they tested it, it it caused uh, apoptosis and, and some cancer cells. So. I, I found that a lot of herbs cause aptosis and cancer cells. If you do the research and you see what they've done you know, clinically, you're like, man, someone's been lying to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, goldenrod salve the last two years. Yeah, too much wax. Yeah. The so then you just think you just as a lip balm. Then you'd have golden. Then yeah, you'd have lip balm mm -hmm. instead, or you could just make a balm yeah, out of it. Got some little violets here. They're in the middle of making some violet and candula uh, salve. Oh. They'd love some free salve. There's, I've heard it a couple of times. They, so there's somebody, everyone so, wants the salve, man. Okay, so okay, so Kelly, what was your name again? I'm Carol. Carol. Kelly and Carol, I guess they each get a free salve. Ah, uh, yeah. And then that'll leave me a few more. We'll have a few left out. Um, we'll have a few left out. Maybe, maybe I'll just pour it in the one ounce tins. That'll give us more. Mm -hmm. So, because I forgot her name, Carol gets the two ounce. I'm getting it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. If I don't say oh someone's my. name like three times, I would be good. It would be good for my healing. Oh, Cindy, you're right. But oh. uh, you had to throw the knee out there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and she wasn't able to make it to the, the workshop. Mm -hmm. Oh no, she'll be fine. Definitely yeah. with the camera. Yeah, and stuff. Like she, she, she's already ordered. She's getting a kid, oh, and okay. and I, I have I have some bonus goodies for her. She should put some so. camphor in the with her knee replacement salve when she makes it. Right. Well, she she yeah, actually gave a kit. She ordered a kit, so I'm gonna throw a little extra. But she got some extra goodies coming. So we're still waiting for this to cook. This is why we're waiting. Okay. It's only been cooking for a little bit. It's not gonna. We wouldn't get a whole lot of the properties. But I did turn up the heat a little bit, so that way you guys aren't getting bored watching us ramble. That's what I was thinking. You know, something along the lines of arthritis. <laughs> I love how excited you look when you were talking about birch. Oh, birch is amazing, and it's kind of cool, though. Okay, so I'm a big kind of, it's going to sound weird. I'm like a cosmic timing kind of guy, right? So, and it sounds weird that I say cosmic timing. And trust me, I am not, I am not one of those spiritual people. I mean, I have spirituality, and I understand that, that, that spirituality plays an important role in healing. But as far as me being super spiritual, that's just not me. Um, but... I do believe that everything happens for a reason, right? So there was a reason why I happened to do, do birch, and then poof, all of a sudden, I, you know, that happened to be the same herb that I had just been researching on. I, you know, I know some of the benefits of birch, right? But I never did any real detailed studies. And before I do a video on a subject, I make sure I know about it before I throw it out there, because if I don't have any science to back it up, then I'm, I'm giving erroneous information that, that could be harmful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really cool that somebody mentioned birch at the same time. It's like, huh, it made it worth the effort to do the research because now I had that information, it was readily available, um, and I was able to share it fairly quickly. And, and it doesn't taste bad either. I've, I've had birch tea, it's not bad. Um, kind of bland, but... Okay. We're not going to let this sit too much longer. And, and to be fair, how long does it take to make a tea? <coughs> like, five minutes. Three to five minutes. Okay, if you're using a leaf, three to five minutes. If you're using a root, eight to ten. Okay. Well, this has been cooking for about 20 minutes. So we're going to heat it up. I have it up to 160. Once it starts getting a little warm, you'll strain it out. 
then I have to make sure to label. Oh, yes. Right. Should I sign there. each label? Would that, would that um, make it more... Do they see the super cool labels that they get? These are the labels that they get. Each one gets a label. It looks like that. They're so cute. And the two ounce label. The kit is fully loaded. It has everything you need except the pan to cook it in. Yeah. This has gotten hard. This is only about an ounce. It didn't fill up quite as much as I would. You can see there. Look at all the headroom in there. Hey, that was a great movie. <laughs> You're making a new one. Not going to be the same. No. The other one got kind of a swirl in it. You know, I'm probably not going to be able to catch that. There, see the swirl? Yeah, that looks really cool. And the last one. So. Let's talk about Black Sav. While, while this is cooking, we'll talk about Black Sav. Black Sav has been around for over 100 years. My, I, lots, lots of people talk about, oh, my grandma used to make Black Sav. Oh, my grandma used to get Black Sav. And they still have some Black Sav today um, that's available. It, Prid, I believe the name of it is. It comes in a little orange tin called Prid. It's, it's a black healing salve. Um, and they have it, the Ithacum. I think the compound is. They have a compound in it that's supposed to be healing uh, to get in it's a, as a drawing salve. Now, when you when you think of a black salve, when I think of a black salve, I think of a drawing salve. This is a salve that's going to help pull out infections. It'll help get splinters out. It softens up the skin around those areas, and it'll pull those out. So you want to, when you get something like that, or you're trying to make, or, or and this is going to have some, I don't have notes. I, I don't have my, my computer available to do this for you guys today like I normally do. So for those of you who normally watch me live, you have to take notes on this. I'll give you a quick, I'm going to run down a few a few good herbs that would be in a good black salve, and then the quickest way to cook it, because you're not going to cook it like you do any of these salves. Um, so when you want a good black salve, you want something that's going to be able to pull toxins and other things out. So one of the first herbs that I put into a black salve would be chaparral. Chaparral is it's known to pull out heavy metals. It, it's used a lot of times for heavy metal chelation. It... it Chelation, whatever, hit up top. Um, it, it, it's a really good herb. It, it's a detox herb, and it, it, it's the herb that they make creosote out of. I don't know if you've ever heard of creosote. Creosote is a is a, a wood preservative that they use like on um, railroad railroad ties. That that nasty smell and stuff, and it tastes just like it's awful. Right? It tastes awful, but it, it does the job. Okay, and then if it tastes good, everybody would be sick all the time anyway. So. You it's go medicine. It's not supposed to taste right. It's not candy. So you have chaparral. C H A P A R R A L. Chap. And then A R R A L. Two R's, one P. Chaparral. The second herb that's really good for a salve like that is slippery elm. It's that same one we were talking about. When it is in a oil, it is a little easier to use if you don't have as many problems trying to strain it through. Okay, so the mucilage will still be there, um, but it's not as prevalent, and you don't, you're not using a ton of it, right? You're just using enough of it to add the properties to your salve. Another good herb to use for something like that would be chicory, chicory leaf, not the root. You want to use the leaf, A, because there's more aerial parts, um, but the leaf has, has all the the a majority of the nutrients, a, a lot of the higher nutrients, A is the B's, you know, your B complex, um, the, 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 the vitamins with the vitamins with letters, it has more of those versus your roots are going to have more of your minerals, so you're going to have your iron and your, your, you don't really want that necessarily for, for heavy, metal, heavy metal detox, for detoxing, okay. Another good herb would be cilantro, cilantro is also known to help pull toxins out, it gets down deep and it's a healing herb as well. And then, of course, the last one would be like plantain. Um, plantain for pain. Plantain's a good pain reliever. It's a healing herb in and of itself, but it's also known to help um, kill out like excess bacteria. It's, it's antimicrobial. And hey, how are you? Um, so there you, she goes. There's Sarah. Finally, Sarah. Better, better <laughs> late than never. Good for you. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> So, you know, she can go back and roll watch it, too. Okay, so when you have those those particular herbs, let's see what I have. Chaparral, slippery elm, uh, chicory leaf, cilantro, and plantain. Those five herbs. You don't want to add too many herbs. That's another thing. When you're making your, when you're making your own herb blend, 
too much is too much, right? Too many chiefs, bro, the pot, all that, bro, however that goes, too many chiefs, I don't know what I mean. Keep it simple. I don't like to use one or two, but I don't like to use nine or ten, right? So you got to have a happy medium somewhere in the middle. And when you're using them, you don't want to necessarily use them in the same ratio. You know, one to one to one to one to one, right? Because if you're, if you're doing something for arthritis pain, you're going to want to add something like cayenne to it, right? So I don't want to use two ounces of cayenne <laughs> when I'm using, you know, uh, the same amount of something else because that's going to make it like fire. And when yeah. you put it on, I mean, you won't, you won't notice it initially, but you have emu oil on, you wrap it up and you get it on there, you'll yeah. notice a difference. And if you put too much cayenne in, you run the risk of burning yourself. So, because that oil is capsaicin, actually yeah. is, is an irritant. Um, so you want to make sure that you use, you know, everything in moderation. So you'd use an ounce of this and a teaspoon of, of that, you know, just a dabble do you in this instance. And if you're going to use any type of, of herb like that in your oils, don't touch your eyes. You know, uh, you wash your hands before you go to the bathroom and common sense stuff, you know, because if you, if you do any of those things, you don't wash your hands. Okay. Yes. You're only going to do that once too. It's membrane. Right. Yes. 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 No I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've done like, okay, so I made, I made a joint muscle rub. We have a joint muscle rub we sell at the Elder Herb Shop. Um, I've had that recipe for, that's the orange stuff that I gave the, the Fletcher kids. Okay. Okay. So, I couldn't tell you how many times I strained that out, wiped my hands off, gave it a quick rinse, didn't think anything of it, and did this. <laughs> or this, you know. And, and then, you know, I maced myself, I spent the next half hour trying to wash my eye out. Or there have been times when I'm when I'm squeezing it out, and and I don't know if you've ever squeezed out, if you've, if you've ever squeezed out a lot of um, cotton, but sometimes when you go to squeeze it, it'll come out in spurts. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. if it's not going, it's not going. It'll come out. Well, I had that hit my eye too. Um, you know, so you gotta be very careful. You make your stuff with purpose, but when you use certain herbs, make sure you use precautions. So if you have cayenne in it, use gloves. You know, if you're not gonna use gloves, wash your hands when you're done. That's not one of those you want to rub all over your body. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to wear like a face mask while I wouldn't. I'm always touching. Yeah. Right. And all over. My I, nose is going always, and I get. Mm. I learned over the years that I just over the years when I when I'm dealing with certain oils, I just don't touch my face. I just make sure not to touch my face. Wear gloves. Wear some. The, the yellow biohazard biohazard suit. Yeah. I think this one's pretty close. We could probably strain it. Okay. I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit more though. I'm going to put it up to 165, 170, 170 will do, but it's only going to stay that way for just a minute. Long enough for me to get a straining cloth. I'm going to use a wide mouth because we're using a, an oil that's more viscous. The reason why I'm heating this oil up more is because I did add the shea butter to it, which is going to make it a bit stickier. Okay. So um, if I had just stuck with the oil, and the coconut oil, I might have been able to get away with it, but I would have had to have used less herbs because you won't have as much headroom to be able to, to, to strain it out. So I used the three, and I didn't say it while I was doing it. I was just, oh, I was just thinking out loud, or not thinking out loud, I should say. Thank you, Curly. That would have been fun. Yes, <laughs> flash. Side of wave. Well, it was feels like the lava flashing in the eye. Right. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're going to wait. If you're using an induction heater, it'll it'll send everything to the middle. It's a little hard for me to show you that. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. You can kind of see everything right over here. Right over here. It sends everything to the middle. This stuff smells really good. If you want to eat it. I use the wide mouth on this one because I'll be able to pour more of the oil. That one's actually straining pretty well. A lot better than I thought it was going to, to be fair. I only turned it up long enough to put the oil to 170 degrees. I didn't put it up there to cook it for any length of time at that temperature. Just simply enough to bring it up to that heat so I could make it as watery as possible. Because, again, the, the colder your oil is, if you let it get cold, you try to strain it, you're going to be sorry. You're just going to make a big mess. You'll be frustrated. I've done that. This is, this is experience telling you. Don't do that because I've done it. It's frustrating. Now, 
Now, because it is more because it is more of a, a sticky substance, you want to try to be as quick as you can. Because if you're using if you're using co uh, cotton like this, you can be a little bit rougher with it than if you're using a if you're using a coffee filter. If you're using a coffee filter, don't do this. Don't do this to it at all. You're only going to do it once. Then you can get mad because you're going to break through and all that stuff's going to go into the bottom. Yeah, it's very frustrating. That's very, it's, it's worse than toilet paper, I swear. When I do coil silver, when I'm straining coil silver, I use coffee filters um, to pour it through. And I usually use about a half a dozen, six or eight coffee filters at once because it'll catch the, the heavier uh, silver particles. And you don't want a lot of the heavy particles. You want the you want the, the ionized part that comes off the silver. You don't want necessarily the heavy particles. Yeah. You know, I don't want to look like that guy that turned himself blue. Right, right. So, and he did that on purpose, though. He said that specifically. He did it on purpose. Just so. to prove it, or? Well, he wanted to be healthy, and realistically speaking, he didn't catch any microbes. You know, you know he didn't. Yeah, I buy some. I buy uh, pre-made, so it's very clear. Right, and the clearer it is, the better. If you're going to have any color at all, it better be yellow. You know, if it's gray, that means there's a lot of heavy metal particles in it. Sorry. If it's gray, there's a lot of heavy metal particles in it. Um, if you have to shake it, it is not colloidal silver. <laughs> okay. Notes. If, if, it, if, it says, if it says shake well before using, think about this. It's colloidal silver. I'm going to explain this to you on a, on a, bio, on a bio, uh, molecular level. You have ionized particles, so they're charged particles. They are going to stay in equidistant away from each other, right? Because like, like charges repel. So you have all those particles in one bottle. They're not gonna like, they're not gonna gather to one part of the bottle, and then you have you know less over here and more over here because the the way the force works and the energy works, they're all gonna stay in equidistant away from each other. They can only go so far, and they yeah, you know they're and they're suspended. only gonna right. Yeah. So if you have to shake it, that means a the particles are so heavy that they're not suspended in water, so you're not having nanoparticles at that time. They're more like milliparticles, right? Okay. So yeah. you're, that's where that's where you run your risk of having more of a heavy metal. Um, your nanoparticles are the ones that are going to stay free floating, and for it, they should they should stay that way forever until until their energy has been dispelled. And the only way to do that would be to ground them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if it's in a glass jar, it's never going to be grounded. You're never going to dispel the energy. The energy will still be in the colloidal silver. It'll stay equidistant apart forever. The only way it's going to go away is if your water goes away. And then at that point, the residue that's left over is still going to be beneficial, right? It may not be charged anymore, but you're still getting the, the benefits of, of the, the silver that was left over. Okay. So it's still good for you. It just just be careful if you get colloidal silver and it's gray, don't use it. A good thirty parts per million it should look like a nice rich ale or beer. Um, a good thirty parts per million should. <laughs> because if okay, so here's what they've also found: if it's too clear, that means they're too small, and if they're too small, they're not as effective. Okay. Because they don't, they can't get into where they need to get in. Like, okay, so how it works on a virus? How how colloidal silver works on a virus on a molecular level, is the virus will come along, and the nanoparticle from from the colloidal will attach to the virus. They essentially smother it out, and and they have the same type of they have a negative they have an opposite charge. So the colloidal silver acts like a magnet, and attaches to adheres to the virus. Well, it prevents the virus from being able to to you know to to exert any of its proteins to attach to your cells. And then it smothers the virus because it can't go anywhere. You know, silver is very toxic okay. to microbes. There's, there's a doctor that, from one of the studies that I read, he said he has not seen it ever. He's never seen a single microbe that can withstand even the tiniest amount of silver. Okay. So, but, you know, NIH doesn't want to tell you that. Here's what's funny. Here's a little side note about colloidal silver for those of you who may be naysayers. Um, pharmaceutical companies are actively using pharmaceutical or using pharmaceutical grade colloidal silver as a carrier for chemotherapy, oh. even though they know that the colloidal silver is more effective in, in some cases um, against the against the cancer than than the oh. stuff that it's carrying. Oh, so you know, look how effective uh, this yeah, works for you, worse. right? It works so well for you, it, you know. But if you hadn't used the colloidal silver to carry it, it wouldn't have worked as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, I. I or maybe at all, huh? Or maybe at all. <laughs> well, the whole the whole point of chemotherapy is to kill. The, the cancer before it kills you, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's highly toxic. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's people, yeah. that's why people say, well, that herb is toxic. It's like, well, so it's chemotherapy. They give that to you. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's clean this up. And then we'll add our cocoa butter, which is the hardest. 
I almost added the cocoa butter in, which would have screwed this whole thing up. <laughs> we got all wrapped up in... That's because I was trying to steal it, so you're just, hurry! Kelly, yeah, hurry up before and use Kelly it before steals it. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly steals the show. I don't know where it went. What cocoa butter? <laughs> Did not have it. I reused the water bottle. Alright, so like, clean out your pan. To get any of the floaties out, you don't want floaties in your salve. If you don't want floaties in your salve, I should say. This does not have any emu oil in it. Oh, yes, it does. It has a little bit in the base oil. But this is still very hot. So I'm going to tell you to be very careful if you're going to do this right after. This is still sitting at about 170 degrees, which is pretty, pretty darn close to being able to burn you. If you get it too hot, um, it'll smell burnt too. It is very hot. Do it like a teapot. Wasn't that much left in there anyway. So, we're going to have a few of these to give away. How am I supposed to choose the best comment? They're all the best. Right? I only have enough for everybody, dang it. Sarah, did you get your package? Here. I'm sure she's here. Okay, so here's how amazing Sarah is. Sarah is one of has been is, is one of my longest patrons. Derek also um, is also one of my longest patrons. Cindy is one of our newer patrons, comparatively, but uh, she's she's been here for a minute too. Sarah is um, she, she went on vacation with her daughter earlier this summer, and she I'm gonna lower this heat down to about 130. Um, she was on her way back. She lives in New York. Sarah lives in New York. They were on their way back from vacation. She swung 400 miles out of her way to come and see me at the store. Wow. Right. To come and see me at the store. And, right, and yeah. she comes on the one Saturday that I had to work. <laughs> and she showed up like 15 minutes before I had to leave to work. I was like, man, oh, are no. you kidding? If I had had like another half an hour or, or more time, I would have actually used a vacation day. And, you know, I, I, then we, we, her and I, I would have, I would have given her a workshop. Because she had a daughter with her, too. Yeah. I would have given them a workshop right then. They would have had an instant workshop out in the yard. Here we go. Blast. But, yeah, and then I had to go work. So, But, yeah, I was I was really, really... That, I told everybody at work, I said, hey, man, check this out. I have one of my followers, blah, blah, blah. She came out. Blah, blah, blah. It was so amazing. It was, it was just really cool that, that she took the time. To yeah, miles. absolutely. That's a lot yeah, of people driving. Yeah, everyone's seriously. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 She's doing good her. Yeah. So she did get her package, what she said. Awesome. You can do the same thing with that. Um, hey, I just moisturized my hands though, so it's not soaking in as well. I gotta keep going, make sure I get everything. It does, it works like right away. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm heating up just the cocoa butter. We got it, we got it going. I put it on 130 degrees, which will make sure that it stays low enough that we're not gonna burn any of our compounds. Oh, base oil. Yeah, it's actually, it works very quickly, like you're, I know you said that to me, but experiencing it. Right, you have to see it for yourself. Yeah. And so, I just took a little bit off the cap, and I just moisturized the whole top of my hand. Kelly couldn't help herself, she's like a kid at Christmas, so she I know, to, you give me these presents, and I'm about to open them. We're at the Bear Soul Studio and Rock Shop, and this is, this is their actual studio where they come up. And they do they do their meetings. Uh, you guys do drums and stuff like that, don't you? Yep. 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 Sure Tomorrow do. evening we're doing a drum circle, and then um, every other week we have a women's circle. You guys. Three times a month, Gene does uh, his drums 101 workshop. You, you do Instagram. Uh, we do do Instagram and Facebook. Facebook we get the least amount of traction. Yep. Right. I agree. Yeah, I think they punish us because we refuse to pay for the boosting. So. Right. Okay, so they're Bear Soul Studio and Rock Shop. You have to have a whole thing. And <clears throat> they're in Lakewood. They have a nice little store. I've seen I've seen pictures. I haven't been there yet, but that, that is on my agenda once I get a vacation day. Pop on up here and see the store itself. Um, as you're mixing this, it's gonna it's gonna take a while depending on how small you put your cocoa butter. Mine was kind of a big chunk, but it smells amazing though. Makes me hungry. 
we can all smell what's going on. Right? You have to explain it to you. It smells like it smells like we're cooking chocolate in here, and you know, because of the cocoa butter and the shea butter. The shea butter smelled pretty chocolatey too. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get as much of the oil out of these jars as I can. And I'm sorry if that's echoing on the on the video. I really, really apologize. And I say really, really a lot. So I really, really should stop that. Okay. 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 Once that is all melted, you don't have to do anything else. You can turn it off and then we'll get it poured. Here's what I will do to make it go a little bit faster. I'm going to take some of it and put it here in the spoon and just leave it sit here. Just for a minute. Mm -hmm. Diane said she's new, your new Patreon, and she'd love to have a, a bomb something with her tits on the earth. Uh, so we have, now I don't have a lot of these, remember, I only have a few. I didn't bring enough to make a lot. I, I was trying to make it simple. Here's the ratio you want for your for your bees for your salve. If I haven't talked about it, <clears throat> if you were using one cup, eight ounces of oil, you would use one ounce or 30 grams. I know it's, I know 28 grams is supposed to be an ounce, but trust me if I tell you, 30 grams is better. If you have just an ounce, take your ounce. But excuse me, I'm very tough. Um, 28 grams is or 30 grams is better. It's going to give you that. A gram either way when you're doing your measurements when it comes to salve can mean the difference between you having a cream and you having a, a salve or a balm. You know, so when it comes to smaller batches like this, a gram is very relevant. So you can go get a kitchen scale. Harbor Freight has them for like 15 bucks. Um, and it'll get you down to, to the gram or to do tenth of an ounce. And it makes it a lot easier if you're trying to weigh out, if you're, especially if you're trying to do salves. Um, when we get into the lotions, you definitely want, definitely, when I tell you when we get into the lotions, you want one that's going to measure by the grams. Because with the lotions, we have to be so careful, that's going to be the difference between you having a milkshake, you know, or you having a heavy cream that you can't hardly even move. And, you know, just a gram or two either way can really affect your lotion too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you got to really, yeah, got to really pay attention and keep an eye on All right, I'll turn this off. This will give me more. If I ship them out, I won't be able to do. I won't be able to do tracking if I ship it because it's like four bucks a piece just to ship it out. So if you guys are okay with me not having to just put it in an envelope, I'll have a few to give out today. I can I can be a little bit more sparing, but I didn't bring that many one ounce tins with me. Yes, I did. One, two. These are only half ounces. Is half ounce going to be sufficient for everybody? Is anybody going to be offended if you only get a half ounce tin? Oh, I have more. Don't worry about. It. I I brought I brought one more kit. I can I can actually steal a few more out. I wasn't planning on doing this, but since I, since you guys stuck around this whole time, you know. One, two. You can, open, can you open that one up and get me the small ones, please? There should be six of them. Did anybody say? How, how are they going to be with the... Uh, nobody responded. I what? think beggars can't be choosers. So they're Touché. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, man. I'll Just take it. Give it. it. Throw it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for those of you who are here, who see it, this is only good today, April 29th at, what time is it? Uh, 4.10. At 4.10. Anybody contacts me after this live is done and this thing is recorded, I'm sorry, the, the deal is no longer oh, good. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you get a million views and I'll, I'll, I'll right. figure out which country. What I'll, have I done? Right, I'll figure out which country I want to go live in. And <laughs> Hide away. And what I, since I'm going to stick around here for a few minutes after I'm done with this, what I'm going to do is I have a couple of extra oils. So I'll throw, I'll make some more. I'll throw it in a, uh, throw it in a jar, take it home, and I'll pour a few more. At this point, we have 12 people. 
So the 12 of you who are currently here watching right now are entitled, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, eight, yeah, I can do that, um, to a half ounce, <laughs> a half ounce of the salve that was made throughout this. You just contact me through, send me a message through here. You, you, you should be able to directly contact me through. Um, uh, Diane cannot find you your can... link for the kits. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Wait one second. Oh, there's the main apple study, by the way. Ah, yeah, yeah. right now. We were talking about May apple. Did anybody see the May apple study and how what it does? That's the one that went uh, viral on Instagram. I'm getting you a link to the store right now. I'm going to put it in the comments. So, control V. This should be it right there. Sorry. That should be it right there. That's for the kit. But um, it's also possible that they sold out. I don't know. I haven't looked. Oh, oh glass. One's getting like a quarter ounce. Yeah. And it's worse than sad. That's all right. Mm. Okay. Some dish soap. Right. And awesome. Oh. I use awesome. Oh, okay. Awesome so works good. really well. Yeah, awesome is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome stuff. It's named appropriate. When it comes to when it comes to cleaning any of this stuff up, if you guys are wondering, yeah. awesome, awesome is an amazing okay. product to use. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead. We're probably gonna. Is there any questions about making salves? These haven't hardened yet. It's gonna take a while for them to cool off. Uh, um, Woody's grinder. Hey Woody, would you post uh, a link to your website? Diane's looking for that too. Oh shoot! Yeah, Woody. Yeah. Yeah, please. If you can do it in the comments, I will. Um, I'm going to go through and edit the video, this video. So anytime you guys want to come back and reference it, there's going to be links to my eBay store. There'll be links to my Etsy store. When I got when I went live, I didn't. We kind of ran into a time crunch towards the very end. Um, so we're going to try to make sure to um, put all the links, especially to Woody Wood Grinder, because, it was, because of him we were able to add, add an extra special goodie to the staff. Um, but we will I'll put all the links to all that stuff so you guys will be able to find it easier. I mean, I suppose if you want to open up one of the other windows and do a search, quick search for Woody Wood Grinder, okay. you, might be able to, you might be able to put it... Um, in the comments now, unless Woody's doing it. He might have taken off. That would be nice. It will take a while for these. When you make a salve like this without the beeswax, it is going to take a little longer for it to soften. And in fact, in some cases, you may have to refrigerate it first to get it to go back to a, to a solid state. In some cases, if you melt like coconut oil, it takes forever for it to harden back up sometimes. In some cases, it won't even harden up all the way. Oh. Um, so, you know, with, with when you make salves like that and you don't have the beeswax, you can use paraffin too, but that's gross. I mean, if you go to benefit, if you're going to take all the effort to make an all natural salve, yeah. and, then, and then, you, then you go and throw, yeah, you go and throw chemicals in there, it, you know, you're kind of defeating the purpose. But it, it, you can, as, as an alternative, you certainly can use that as a substitute if you really feel the need. But I, I personally wouldn't. I accidentally put two W's in there. It's not giving me a whack. Oh, he's a W O O D I E. Okay. Yeah. Delete upper right. Yeah, I'm like fighting around with it. Thanks. Awesome. Woody Wood right there. there. Sure is. It's Woody Wood Grinder dot com. Yep. W O O D I E, not W O O D Y. Yeah, that's pretty good. <coughs> Woody Wood Grinder dot com. Yeah. Woody Wood Grinder. Yeah. 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 Y
two cats to bag around. Oh, did you get to look at it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is what, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely use it. This is going to be used more when I do it, when I do more informational videos. However, you'll never see this on TikTok, right? I don't, I'll never be able to post this on TikTok because it's considered an illegal activity. And, Weird. Right. So, you got to be careful what you talk about on TikTok. I got in I trouble not too long ago. Watching. Well, I was talking about the extraction process of THC. And they said that I was committing illegal activity. So wow, right. yeah, I wouldn't play games. It was like I, all I was doing was explaining the the process, right? I didn't even go about this is what you do. Somebody wanted an example of what an extract was. I said, well, this is what an extract is, and um, and we were right in the middle of that. And TikTok shut us down live. Wow. Yeah. So there was a few of us. Were probably a few people here that were here. They they saw that. Then we had, that's this that, that was the first night I went live on YouTube. Mm. And so that's exciting right you know okay, lessons learned when one door closes another one opens mm -hmm. so we come over here we don't get it we don't get quite as many people here here over here but that's okay we we do okay we it's the people that, that stick around if you that i put some just on the spoon if you just let it cool off it will take a while but it will harden up um it's not going to get look it's not going to get super hard it's not going to get as hard as you would get with a beeswax and again, you may have to put it in the refrigerator, refrigerator, okay, in order. Put it in a little ice water. Is that hard enough? Um, yeah, but you use a lot of it in your water. Yeah. But they'll, it'll do the same thing. And again, if you if you do make it out of that, don't keep it in your car or your purse. Yeah. Right. Okay. Don't do that. You, you'll you'll do it, but you come summer, you're only gonna do it once. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh man, I can't believe I did that. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the rest uh... of these. And just a little bit less oil, and I'm going to put the rest of the herbs that I have some here, mm. and we will make the rest of this out for you guys. For those twelve of you, remember, you guys just get a hold of me, message me, and give me your address. Some of you, are, I already have your address. Sarah, I know I have yours. Cindy, I think I have yours too. Um, but give me your address, so I, I will mail it out. Not going to be any tracking information. I'm just going to put it in an envelope and ship it because you know. <laughs> Twelve of them at four bucks a piece. That's a that's a pretty expensive live, but I could I could do fifty eight cents or whatever. That, that's not so bad. So big, I think her name is said that it might um do be worth doing a dual stream for you to do YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Do Twitch? I mean, you know, should I should I get a Twitch account? Would anybody even watch me on Twitch if I did Twitch? You know, I, I considered it. I thought that was like I thought that was more of a. I don't know it's have much about Twitch, to be honest. I can't go live on TikTok for a while. I, I'm in trouble. I'm in, I'm in TikTok trouble right now. So, um, <laughs> but, but I can go live on YouTube. I can go live I on I was just Instagram. actually thinking while we're doing this, next time we could do a live as well. Right, everybody so, can. Yeah. It was way after the fact. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, man, next time. Next mm -hmm. time when we just start doing a lotion. So what should we do next? Let's, let's do a quick poll. You guys are here. You, you know, you, you nine. Oh, yeah, see, now there's only nine of us. You nine, you all are going to get a direct... A direct vote. What are we going to do next? We should do... I, I think we should do a lotion. Um, any ideas? Anybody have any ideas? Huh? Buffalo Bills lotion. Buffalo Bills lotion. <laughs> I could. Put the lotion yeah. in the basket. <laughs> it puts a lotion on its skin. <laughs> Gets the hose again. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you guys get a direct vote? All nine of you have to vote. Come on. You have a keyboard for crying out loud. Key away. Oh, dandelion sunscreen. Yeah, that's what you had suggested. I like that idea. Dandelion. The biggest thing Looks is like YouTube hits me hard. Oh, I missed it. What YouTube hit me hard with? Uh, uh, donations. Uh, like 30% of Streamlabs. Only like uh, for Tech 5. They get like one or three percent. I don't get anything. YouTube doesn't pay me anything. I'm not. I'm not monetized on YouTube yet. I'm working on it though. You want to do skincare, facial moisturizers. Well, here's the beauty of it. If I do a dandelion sunscreen, it's, it's also going to be a skincare moisturizing lotion. You can use it for anything. Yeah. And all. And we're going to use the whole plant, everything, all of it, top, top to bottom. If we're going to do dandelion lotion, if that's what we choose, it's going to be the whole thing. I'm not going to just do the flower or just do a leaf or something. Because the, 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 the way the benefits work is, you know, they all work at separate stages of, of what you're trying to do. You know, dandelion root is more apt. It sounds weird, but according to the science, the dandelion root gets down deep, 
right? So after you've been burnt, if you've been burnt by the sun or before you've been burnt, it helps to protect you from being burnt. Again, it goes backwards is what I meant. Um, the leaf will help you, if you have the leaf in there, the leaf will help you as you're being burnt. And then the flower is supposed to help you post burn because the iodine oh. and then the other properties in the flower. So if you use the whole thing, you get protection from start to finish versus just using one part of the one Excellent. part of it. Yeah. What are we missing? Um, so they love the idea for dandelion sunscreen and it's that time of year for sunscreen. That's what I was thinking too. But you guys have to share it. Tell people. Let people know. I mean, I'm okay yeah. with. I'm okay with. I thought someone... you meant they had to share their product. No, I, you guys, have, you guys have to share. You know, share the share the videos. Yes. Let everybody I think know. We you all can. agree, dandelion. It is the season too, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Looks like I have to harvest some dandelions. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I I don't know. Well, Kelly and I will figure out a good time. Maybe two weeks from now. Yeah. About two weeks from now. So that would be May fifteenth, give or take. Um, I was close. I was only off yeah. by two days. Um, yeah, I'll be here on Monday. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. <laughs> um, so, how about that? So, May 13th, roughly the same bat time, same bat channel. And, and then we'll try to expand it a little bit more. It means I have to go buy a blender. Um, so, yeah, anybody. If you're a patron, don't buy a kit from my Etsy store. You need to contact me directly if you're a patron. You guys, you patrons get discounts for your, your kits. So, you know, that's kind of the perk of being a patron. You guys... You, you and you 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 ones that are patrons you already know so if you're a patron and you and you were a subscriber over on patreon you get a 20 percent discount on the stuff that i sell so that's just across the board if you're supporting me by giving me your money to do this stuff i can help you out as well by giving you the discount i mean that's a kind of a treat for following along and you know and making it possible for me to do this stuff you guys giving me the money you gave me helped buy you know some of this stuff i mean you granted i had you know the the hot plate was a little a little spendy and then some of the other things but for the most part like the books that we use for the for the class and, and all that you guys you you guys make that happen it, it's your money that that's doing that the money that you give me goes to goes to educating you so i mean i don't use it frivolously and you know it, it's considered well, I don't know, a business so i have to treat it as such um but you know that's what but you know the bottles the kits and you know sometimes it buys the oils or i buy the oils i mean a lot of a lot of my own personal money comes out of this too but um you know what better way to teach people and it, it takes money to make money i guess and it pays itself back it does and you know i i get more back i get more i get more out of it knowing that i help people than, right i'm service oriented so absolutely right. you know a lot of my workshops are donation based and the circles and stuff. I mean, technically, it's donation based, but I, I don't mention it. You know. <laughs> right. I, well, you know, with these, if, if I hadn't, if I hadn't invested all the money that I had to make these kits, right. I, I, I was, was going to say my circles are different. Yeah. But I can do a YouTube for free. That doesn't Correct. cost anything. Yeah. Yeah, the line it is. Okay, it's going to be a the line sunscreen, and we will. I will teach you guys. Animal. If you guys want, I mean, that might be something I can make a kit for too. Mm-hmm. Make your own, make your own dandelion lotion kit. Anybody be interested in something like that? Serious skin removal for like dry and cracked heels. I know. Okay, so here, there's, there's a couple Arnica? things. The the well the the dried and cracked heels. You you may be surprised. Go get a. You get dried cracked heels. Mm-hmm. You get dried oh, cracked me? heels. Oh me no yeah. I don't. Do you do? Mm-hmm. Not real. As older as I'm getting, I am a I I used to get it a lot. I don't I don't get it anymore, and I fixed it with one thing. B B complex vitamins. Oh, liquid b-complex vitamins liquid. took care of it gotcha. and and of course you have to stay you have to stay hydrated of course and, and of course there are lotions any of the lotions that i teach you to make if you you can you can substitute any herb you want if you go over to my patreon page and look up either one of the the lotions that are free they're free it don't cost you anything to get over there and look at those um and then there's a section that'll do like the right on the left on the very upper part that says free all those articles in there are free and there's a lot of stuff that's reading and there's some videos but there's actual recipes that are that are available for just anybody. Again, that's the whole trying to help people stuff. Um, you can substitute any of those herbs in any of those lotions for anything you want. I mean, you know, if, if you're worried about you know healing your skin, so you could use herbs like heal all. Uh, I'm not sure where you're located. Plantain is another good one. Dandelion, I, that, that's usually my go-to for just about most things. Uh, it, it's it a, is a cure. 
it, it's a very yeah it's a very versatile herb for mm -hmm. sure um creeping charlie because it's a mint but it's antimicrobial it's good for inflammation um trying to think of some other herbs you know you wouldn't necessarily need yarrow but roses so it's really good for your skin it helps to increase moisture content in that particular area and you could add roses to it too rose petals rose flower rose leaf leaf has this has similar properties it doesn't have as much vitamin c as the petals do but it's, it's still medicinal the roots are also medicinal on roses so i mean that's going to be probably one of my next videos I, that, that was one of the other ones that went went viral was you know what do you see when you look in your yard and I'll go through and I'll put four hours into a video making one and I'll get like you know, 5,000 views and, and I'm bummed out and only got 5,000 views, right? And then I'll spend 20 minutes working on one of my vid in my driveway <laughs> and it gets half a million views, right? <laughs> right? And, yeah, and you know, it's like, well, and, and then I had to speed it up to boot. If you guys heard it, I, how many comments did you guys see in there that it sounded like, <laughs> I sounded like an auctioneer. Yeah. <laughs> and you're working on the auctioneer skill. I had to speed it up because I had so much information. That when I went through to edit it, I had to keep, you know, I had to go, well, make it 1.2 times as fast. Nope, that's not working. 1.3 times as fast was finally enough mm -hmm. to get everything in there and under that three-minute mark. Because TikTok's very picky about that. I'm not allowed to do over three minutes. However, I took that same video, came over to YouTube, and posted it normal length. So it's like almost four minutes long. You can actually listen to it without, you know, having your brain try to explode with all that information. <laughs> right. But. And pause it, take notes, play it again, rewind. Like, before I go, we'll take these and put them in the fridge. Sweet. Looks like we're gonna have to. So we're gonna okay. So for all the twelve of you that were here when we talked about that, you guys all get a hold of me in either the messages. They're, they're, I think pretty sure there's a way you can message me. I, I'm almost certain there's a way you can message me. Um, if not, you can go over to any of my other platforms and and message me there. You can look up uh, the, the easiest one, Tracy the Herb Guy, all one word, Tracy the Herb Guy at gmail.com. If you don't have my email address. Um, you can email me that way so I can get you your, your half ounce tin. So we're going to, we're going to probably call it a day, but we're going to cook this stuff up after we call it a day and make this for you guys. So we had uh, 12 of them, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cindy, we'll get, you said, you said give Cindy the big one? Yeah. Okay, Cindy, everybody thinks you get the big one. Hey. Uh-oh. We're just live now? No, we've been live this whole time. I know. <laughs> I saw Who are that. These people we've like, been talking like, to. They, they, okay, Cindy, we, it's been <laughs> voted. You get the big two ounce one. It, it's not two ounces though. It's only like an ounce or whatever in there. And and after looking at these kits, you're gonna lose some oil in your herbs, so you're not gonna necessarily fill up all of those tins. Okay. Don't appreciate me. I have to appreciate everybody else now because they all voted. Everybody, everybody decided. Appreciate the earth. <laughs> so shout out to Gaia. And make sure you stay hydrated and then go look at go look up that video, Diane. Yes. Go look up those videos on, on how to make any of those lotions. And if you're using lotion anyway, here's here's a little quick tip, and then I'll call it a day. I know I keep saying that. If you're using lotions anyway, make sure you read your ingredients. If the first four or five ingredients has alcohol in it, you're just drying out your skin and you're gonna need more lotion. Yeah. More lotion, more lotion. If it's mostly water, same thing. Um, my mix, when, when I do my lotion mix, it's oils first, then water, you know, because the water is what you use to emulsify. Well, actually, I don't use water. I use aloe vera juice, but um, that's because aloe vera has medicinal properties as well. But you use, I, I use aloe vera juice as my water base and then with my oils, and then when you go to emulsify it, um, it's less likely to go rancid because the aloe vera is antimicrobial, and it's more beneficial for you, so... Um, and you could even technically drink the lotion, but it'd be gross. You would only see, uh, I mean, you could. Like when I do the joint muscle lotion, I have cinnamon in it, and it smells so amazing. It makes you want to eat it. Mm. But if you do, you'll be sorry, because there's also cayenne in it. <laughs> That's the rubbing of the eyes. I actually put yeah. cinnamon and cayenne in, like, hot cocoa. Okay. And it's delicious. You know why? It's good. The capsaicin releases more of the compounds from the cinnamon. Oh man, it is incredible. There's a tip from Kelly. Add yeah. a little bit of cayenne to your cinnamon tea. And you and will... your hot cocoa. Or your hot cocoa, right. Yeah. And it'll... It, it'll... Makes it, it takes it to a whole other level. I call it an Aztec. I'll also add coffee to it sometimes. Mocha. I'm a... I call it mocha. Yeah. yeah. Aztec yeah. mocha for sure. It's good stuff. Is there any other questions on SAB that I should really, really get to today? Is I really, really going to say that ten more times? 
Yes, honey, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Honey's good stuff. Any questions? Do a few seconds. It took two hours. Ten, nine, right. eight. Right, didn't count down. <laughs> Make sure, if you haven't gotten a hold of me, get contact me. So you can get your free staff. Mm-hmm. If you live in a hot space, get it in the house as quick as possible. Because if you get one of the ones that has the, uh, if you get one of the ones that has the cocoa butter, it, it's not going to stay hard long. It's so, melty. Right, you got to keep it in a cool, cool, dark place. Not, you don't have to keep it in the refrigerator. But once it, once it hardens up, it should stay hard. As long as you keep it under that 120 degree temperature, give or take. Nope. I think that's it. All right, you guys. You guys are all pretty amazing. Thank you. You guys are awesome. I will see if I can edit this and maybe get some of the other stuff out. But we will remember May 13th. We will be making a dandelion motion. You got the hardest dandelions. Yep. <sighs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everybody. Bye.